Okay. What is this? Can our guys come on out? Fellas, we know you're back there. You can't hide. <laughs> okay, what is that? And what on earth is that? We want to start today by telling you what this is to us. This is a collaboration that's transformed not only many spaces, but ourselves, our visions, and how we see everyday objects and possibilities. It's our connection to the present, our ability to inspire, motivate, and innovate together. It's our time to transform something simple into something grand. There's a practical necessity in this to be a collaboration just in needing the manpower because of the scale and the tediousness of our work, but there's a deeper level of our collaboration as well. And we feel that our success is a reflection of our connection, our motivation, and all of our shared moments. We share a lot of time together. Not only did we create the color condition, we are on a water ski team together. We share studio space together, friends, a business, leftover lunches, even shoes. <laughs> Just by the amount of hours and bottles of wine we have spent, we have covered every single topic of conversation and know every single detail of each other's lives, like why I know that your aunt out in Midland what kind of gas mileage she gets out on that old Mustang, or why you know what my parents ate for dinner on Monday. So, a lot of time. We're constantly learning, learning things like what kind of knot we have to tie to keep this 50-pound panel hanging on the side of this building for three weeks as we are going into tornado season. Or how, how can we keep our extension ladder from going through our own giant glass window at our warehouse? Thank you to the Dallas Fire Department for stopping by that day. <laughs> Most importantly, we learn how to get out of an argument when we are tired, hungry, and frustrated, how to move forward and to pull it off. When we finish an install, we get a huge rush and sense of weightlessness. That is the reward that makes up for all of the grueling aspects, all of the sleep lost, all of the time spent. It is our release our obsession, and our outlet. To put it very simply, we do this because it makes us feel good. It's about the dynamics of two people and being open to each other's ideas and engaging in another person's thought process and how that openness can help us build something greater and work toward even grander goals. We believe in each other and we motivate each other and it's that trust that we've built that makes us who we are. And sometimes it can be really hard to stay in the present moment. And there's days when we don't know who or what we are. It's like, are we teammates? Are we business partners? Are we artists? And I mean, some, are we even friends? I think, I think we're friends today. Well, it's your birthday, so I kind of have to nice to you today. Okay. <laughs> it's always a happy birthday. <laughs> uh, but in the end, we know that we're working on something that we're both insanely passionate about something that just lets us be us and to be present. Okay, but really, what, what is it? It is $1.99 plastic tablecloth from Party City or any party store and rolls of plastic grid from the Home Depot. That is it. We pride ourselves in being the foremost authority of plastic tablecloths and you can find us in all over Dallas and in any city, scouring every dollar and dime store, trying to find that one perfect sheer mint green that we only found in Brooklyn at this convenience store. But you know, we could talk for the next 12 minutes just about the quality of plastic tablecloths, but we have a feeling that that's not what y'all came here to hear about. So what we would like for you to hear about is how we create transformation with our art collaboration. So our canvas is invisible, and as the nature of installation art, it's also temporary. And that in itself makes it more powerful as it will never become the familiar and it will never be the same again. Every installation is different. It can be anywhere, it can be on anything, so the possibilities are endless. It's really that they're about moments. And our pieces can be seen, they can be heard, they can be touched, and oddly enough, sometimes they can smell. They, they kind of smell like, like barbecue right now, some of them. 
They, they don't taste, but I mean, why couldn't they? We want to push the boundaries of all our materials. We want to ask ourselves, have we taken this far enough? Have we tried it upside down? Have we tried it sideways, underwater? We experiment a lot. We kind of have to when we transform these huge, large spaces that we do. And the materials that we've chosen to use are actually really limited in the colors that are available to us. And we obviously love color. So being visual artists, it's our, feel it's our duty and part of our job to care about how these colors are combined in particular ways to you know, fulfill these aesthetic visions that we have. And we love working in that limitation of a lack of color palette because that forces us to work within these boundaries which makes us ask questions that weren't there before. Perhaps, you know, what kind of new angle or element can bring new sensations to light? So asking things like, okay, movement equals sound. Let's get a fan, which we do quite a bit. Let's wear them around and see what happens when they move. Let's get people standing in them. Let's um, close our eyes and listen to the sound of them. So this is a really great video that we have, of this install that we had not long ago. And there was this little girl that came and she was walking through the baskets over and over. And her mother was with her and she was asking about the work and had shared that her daughter wanted to come over and that her daughter's blind and that she had heard the sound that the work was making and just wanted to come over and feel it. I mean, can you even imagine what kind of colors that this girl must have been feeling? It just blows my mind. So sound can equal color and light can equal color and smell can equal memories. But it's, just not, it's not just how our artwork transforms these spaces, it's how these spaces have transformed our artwork and forced that new perspective to make us more curious. We have done several public art events where we get to share our work in a very accessible way and also share our collaboration with others by streaming with them. Using the same materials that we use that are very accessible to us, meaning very cheap and a lot of it. So one of our more popular activities is it's pretty complex. It's called a streamer stick. You take a stick and a handful of streamers, childlike imagination optional, you put it on a stick and it is transformed into the streamer stick. So to see 500 kids running around the Nasher garden wildly with these sticks full of colorful streamers was pretty amazing, especially since you know most of them have iPads and video games and cell phones. So the fact that two basic materials can still have an impact and be exciting for kids to almost want to fight over and run around with. So it truly does bring back the simplicity to life and connects us with what is light, fun, and engaging. When people see our work for the first time, they always ask, what is it? What is this? What does it mean? For us, there is no great, heavy, deep meaning behind our work. It is about being present about being in the moment and taking it all in. It is about putting your cell phone down, watching the streamer parade go by, listening to what they sound like, laying underneath the streamer canopy and looking up as the sun comes through, being in the moment. We want to color the world, we want to share that feeling, and we want everyone to experience it on their own. Once we transform a space, we have no control. Once we complete an installation, that is all the control we have over it. That is our experiment. From there, it is the space itself, the natural elements, and people that bring the life to it. Kind of like the corny song, the condition the condition is in, except for us, it's the condition that we put the color in. So everything about what we do is very simple. Our materials are simple. Objects are approachable. It's, it's the way we apply them that make them grand. It's the amount. We don't just have a row of streamers. We have hundreds of thousands of streamers. It's the pattern. It's the length. It's the density. And when we started all of this, we didn't have a budget or a grant or a space to work in or a lot of time. We work at night when we get home from our jobs. We stay up too late and work and talk about stickers and still work. and. <laughs> Get excited about neon, color, neon colors while we're working. I mean, you get the idea. We're just we're constantly working. <laughs> um, and when we started, we used to work outside, and that was mainly for space reasons. But it's interesting how that affected us, because as we began seeing these curtains of fringe grow more sprawling and dense, we got more affected by the movement of the color and the interaction with the wind 
and the depth that that created. Our work is very honest. The ideas come from the simplicity of their properties. And being constructed out of plastic, it makes them mo both more durable and flexible that's allowed us to explore them in more conditions. They can be outside, they can get wet, can be touched, they're lightweight. So in all of those conditions I'm talking about over the past four years, we've been able to be stream at the ocean and at the desert, in the woods and at the Winsboro Opera House right across the street, um, across Elm and across some bridges, and at many weddings and birthdays. We still have our day jobs and we still do work at night, but our idea has taken off. And that's allowed us to afford to buy more scissors and ladders. Finally ladders, yes. yes. And we don't just have a single roll of gold mylar. We have a whole case of it and we don't have to fight anymore. Um, and so our success has allowed us to take this experiment that we're doing to the next level. We are inspired by the ordinary and the extraordinary. Similar to Tad, who spoke earlier, we like finding niches of antiquated things and relating to those simpler times when things could be grand without technology. They ignite our imaginations from the most basic to the most beautifully complex. It takes a lot after you get home from your day job to get inspired to keep working. We had to become obsessed with it. Wherever we go, we are constantly scheming driving to ski practice, driving to work, walking the aisles of Home Depot or the party store. We see our surroundings differently. We don't see them as objects or landmarks. We see them as our canvases. We don't see that eyesore of a construction site. We flip out and see a million points to hang streamers from. We drool over bridges and underpasses. So this is how we begin our process. We start by drawing, taking an image of the space, the proposed space, and drawing what it will look like once it has been streamed. This led us to drawing what we call dream streams, which is basically our way of letting all your ideas, your imagination go wild and as big as possible without there being any real technicalities involved at first. So uh, what, what, would the, what would the Coliseum look like streamed? I'm, I'm sure they would let us do it or Victorian England. Get in a time machine and go back there. Or hopefully someday a space station. So we shared this project with a group of eight-year-olds at an installation art camp a few summers back and Dream Streams was our way to teach them how to think big when you're approaching an idea in a very non-intimidating way. It's very freeing to sit down and sketch out the most fantastical, ridiculous, over-the-top installation without there being any threats involved. Like, can, can you even stream a cloud? Sure you can. Yeah. We'll figure out how to get the ladder up there later. So it gets your ideas flowing and allows you to start a project feeling as though anything is possible. Dream streams are our way of seeing the future. How we energize, materialize, motivate and ask ourselves, why not? Why can't we stream that? So, the dream stream that we are currently consumed by is having this train that goes across America. So if you imagine for a second that you're on your way to work and you stop, get stopped at the railroad crossing and all of a sudden this mass of colorful fringe comes whizzing by, I mean, you're not human if that wouldn't make you react in any way. So if anybody in the audience has a train or has friends that have trains, please come find us on the break. So there is power in collaboration, there's power in simplicity, and there's power in transformation. We want to ask you guys to do a little transforming in your world. So you've gotten a little slice of what this is and what the color condition does, and we want to leave you with two things. The first of those two things is underneath your chairs. We encourage you guys to pick them up and experience the moment. Second, we would like for you to share an idea, to ask someone for help. We think you might be surprised what will come back to you. Reach out to someone and ask them to share in your dream stream. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that looks so awesome. <laughs>